Hmm. What's the crack? Today I'm going to be showing you my vinyl collection. So with all the quarantine, there's been a few things happening. First of all, I have not dyed my hair because I can't find any hair dye. Second of all, that was a lie, I actually do have hair dye, I'm just not arsed doing anything because I don't have to go out anywhere. Second of all, for the same thing, uh, I'm too lazy to get my hair cut, so now I have the Karen going. That's interesting. Is this interesting? It's not interesting. Uh, let's talk about my vinyls. This is it. This is my vinyl collection. What? Look at that right there, isn't that amazing? A lot of this collection is actually belonging to my parents. I found their vinyl collections uh, somewhere in the alcoves years ago and I kind of just commandeered whatever ones I felt were mine now because they never used it. Um, I have a few of my own but I'll be going through a variety of stuff. I'll be talking about where I got them or if they're not mine, where they were acquired. Uh, and I'll be talking about when they came out, maybe my favorite songs shit like that. But first... Alright, first one is actually not in the box because it doesn't fit. It's uh, my hardware to self-destruct, which is kind of like a special edition type thing, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's got lots of stuff in it, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, open it up for you to see there. So what we got here is some bubble wrap, a CD, and if you pull back this, it's actually got a ton of concept art pieces in it as well, which were like part of it. It's got, each vinyl is slightly different, and what I'll do is I'll just pull out one of the vinyls to show you, because I just don't want to go messing up all of the uh, stuff and the order that it's in, but look at that. It's actually, I think this is 180 gram. And if you look in the right lighting, it's got this cool kind of kind of pattern, like a burst going across it. And it has that on uh, pretty much all the vinyls. It's a, a, there's a a red one and a yellow one as well. So I'm not gonna actually show you them, but you know that they exist. If you want to know what they look like? Go buy it. My chair chair would like to stop squeaking. That would be fantastic. Also what I will be doing as I look at each one is I'm going to be checking out each one on Discogs. I've already actually put Hardwired in my collection. It says that like the average is like 23 euro. Oh, also my favorite song off Hardwired. Hmm. Um, hmm. It would either be Man Unkind or it would be uh, Am I Savage. Because that breakdown in Am I Savage is just so good. Next one, it's called Scullion. There's actually a lot of Scullion in this record collection that belongs to my parents. I have no idea who Scullion are or anything about them, not even the type of music they are. I would hazard a guess that they're synth pop based on that cover, but let's see if there's any indicators on the inside of this. Okay, so they're definitely actually more like folk, if that's anything to go by. So there's a date on it that says the 15th of March, 1983. So that's when this was bought. Home taping is killing music and it's illegal. Oh, and people are saying that torrenting is what's killing music these days. No, it happened in the 80s too. Let's look up, okay, uh, Scullion. White side of night. LP. Okay, that's a bad, uh, good. <laughs> okay. Folk. Yeah, I mean, they look like they're folk. Nah, hell no. I mean, so apparently it's 10 euro max to get this original, pretty good condition. Uh, it, I mean, it, I would call it good condition uh, vinyl for apparently 10.91. Oh no, it's too bright. This one is, oh, Genesis. Okay, I know Genesis, but this is a trick of the tail. I don't know this album off the top of my head. So if I go, a trick of the tail. I don't know if this is one of their um, proggy albums or if this is like one of their um, like more poppy albums. Oh, it's got a cool inside. Show that off. Show that off for sure. 
It's got all those little cartoon drawings. Which is fun. But yeah, let's see how much it's worth. It looks like there's a lot on here. Uh, that's a lot to look at. Yeah, so it looks like it would be like a tenor to get a Genesis album, which I'm also assuming is an original from... I think that's how you know it's one of my mom's is when it's actually like written down the date, but the date has not been written on it. Let's see what quality the vinyl is in. But the vinyl looks like it's brand new, which is, you know, apparently you get it for 10 euro. People say vinyl's coming back. You'd think that people would spend more money than 10 euro on it then. So far, I am not a millionaire as a result of this vinyl collection. What's the next one? Caramel. The drum is everything. I looked this up specifically because it looked so entry-level jazz. Like, it looked like the funniest, like, most generic jazz album thing that you could possibly think of. Um, it's just three dudes, and they play, like, literally drum and bass jazz, I guess, is, like, the way to put it. Like, it's just, oh, I, I have to look this up. The highest it's been sold for is 15 euro. Oh my god, no. And it's usually sold for like four euro. But this is good. This is good jazz. This is like, this is like jazz. You know what I mean? Simply jazz. Not simply jazz, jazz. Next one is Phil Collins. Oh, I'm not even gonna have a look at this one. Phil Collins, Jesus Christ. I feel like this is one of those albums that literally everybody owns, so therefore it will be worth like one euro. Hello, I must be going. Let's look that up. Yeah, like the... Mm, Median is 370 basically, so whatever this is. I mean, I don't listen to a lot of Phil Collins. I don't know what this is, but um. Japan. Gentlemen take Polaroids. Right, so this will probably be the most 80s thing I've ever heard in my life if I listen to it. Um, come on, buddy. You got this. There's a knack to getting vinyl back into the thing. And how many people love vinyl are watching me basically ram this thing down there like a porn star? Gentlemen take Polaroids. LP. Oh, seriously. Would you pay more than 10 euro for that? Maybe you would. Hit me up. I'm not using it. Unless I do end up liking it, in which case I am using it, so haha, <laughs> you can't have it. This is gonna be a lot of footage to edit together, you know that? Here's another Scullion album. I'm not gonna bother like looking inside and stuff, because we've already went through the fact that I don't really care for folk. But it's a cool album cover. What's the name of the album, though? That's what I'm wondering. Oh, it's literally self-titled. Released in 1979. Folk. Yeah, folk. And it's... Oh! The average that this sells for is about 20 euro. Apparently. Oh, God. <laughs> it's Frankie Ghost. Hollywood. But that's pretty cool. The back of it is so bare compared to the front. You'd think it was like a big concept piece or something. But uh, everybody obviously knows Frankie Goes to Hollywood for that one song they have but I have listened to this album. And Lunar Bay was my favorite song off of it. Lunar Bay was really good. Um, but it's been a long time since I've listened to it on the vinyl. I only listened to it because of uh, knowing it from, or because I've heard of them from uh, Relax. But, you know, after I listened to it, I actually quite liked it. The next one is The Drug and Me Is You uh, by Falling in Reverse. we have got a good little look at that there. I'm not going to talk too much about this one because I have made... Excuse me, I hit you. I already have a full video uh, which you can check out in that card up there. Uh, and I talk a lot more in depth about the album and comparing it from the vinyl to the CD. Although just go watch the video, fuck you. I'm going to start speeding this up because a lot of these I will not have anything to say about. David Soul. He looks like he could have been a Bond from Turkey or something. You too. 
Irish people kind of disowned them, but we kind of have to keep them. Don't hate me. It's a good album. Fuck you. Tubular Bells by Mike Goldfield. This is one of those albums that I know for a fact every single person has heard. Whether they know that they've heard it or not, Tubular Bells is really famous. And it's old. Goddamn. Pink Floyd. Uh, animals. There's going to be a lot of Pink Floyd in this collection. I might just get all the Pink Floyd albums out of the way at the start because they are all my dad's. Um, I might just go and find them. Oh, it has a cool little sleeve on the inside of the sleeve. Um, I'll be careful with that. But yeah, I'll basically like run through all the Pink Floyd albums that my dad has in a row because otherwise it's going to get really really tedious. I did sit down and for the very first time, I am I'm in my 20s and for the first time ever I listened to Dark Side of the Moon uh, on vinyl all the way through and uh, it was good. I enjoyed it. It was uh, an experience. Um, I did not do the typical teenage thing of getting high while I did it, but I did um, I still take the time to listen to it properly and really enjoy it and I liked it so I might do that with the rest of the Pink Floyd albums too. Next Pink Floyd album is the Dark Side of the Moon album. I cannot talk about this very much because the only thing I know is it belonged to my dad but my dad always tells this story every single time that I bring up Pink Floyd is he talks about how he used to have uh, a different vinyl, it was a limited edition vinyl with three of the prisms on it instead of just one and it was limited edition and his brother gave it to his girlfriend and then they broke up so my dad was not able to get the album back because his brother had broken up with the girl so she had the limited edition album and my dad said that he will never forgive his brother for such a travesty, such betrayal. But he does have this one and I did notice before when I was listening to it, it doesn't have his name on it, it has his cousin's name on it. It's signed by him and all. It's signed by Fran, his cousin, like it's, this is 100% just like, and those drawings on it, like oh my god, I have to show you. If these are not the drawings that you do, while you are high. I don't know what is. I mean, either you're 16 and you're doing this because it's so totally cool or you literally are just high listening to this album. And I think we know which one it is. Um, this is a big album. Big double album? Question mark? Oh, it has... has this inside of it. And that is Pink Floyd Harvest. Oh, it is two discs. Two vinyl inside one. Um, maybe the album is called Harvest. I don't know Pink Floyd that well, but it's this one. And it looks like it's in pretty great condition, like it's never been played. Put it back into plastic. That's how we look after things here. The soundtrack from the film More. By Pink Floyd, directed by Barbara Schroeder, produced by Jet Films. Um, I wonder how much Pink Floyd albums would be worth now. Because I know, like in other cases, obviously, like Frankie Goes to Hollywood, everybody has it. So it's not like uh, a thing that anybody wants anymore. But what if it's like Pink Floyd, where they have such a huge fan base that people just want to collect things? Soundtrack from the film, More. 38 for sale from 24. Oh. So yeah, this is another one of those things where it's like 30 euro for it, and the highest anyone's paid for it is 90 euro. That's a valuable vinyl that I will never give away. Mostly because my dad would kill me. And another Pink Floyd one. I don't know the name of it. I know Harvest is obviously the name of the record company. Oma Gumma. Oma Gumma. Oma Gumma. It says I'm good. I'm assuming that's the name of the album. Live album recorded at Mother's Birmingham and Manchester College of Commerce, June 1969. I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, any more Pink Floyd ones? Is this a Pink Floyd one? I don't know, is it? It just looks like it could be a Pink Floyd cover. It is, it's Pink Floyd Wish You Were Here. It just looks like it, because it has like that 
concept art look for it. It's really cool. Wait, let me see what uh, what album it is. Yeah, it's Wish You Were Here. I don't really have a favorite Pink Floyd song. I never got super into them. Um, I'm not knowledgeable on them whatsoever. What I will do is I'll listen to them all the time, but I never look up anything to do with them. I never listen to them on Spotify or YouTube. I literally just listen to them on vinyl at home here. So you could throw on a Pink Floyd song and I would know the lyrics. I would know everything, but I just don't know the album. I don't know the name of the song because I'm just throwing shit on a vinyl player. I mean, what do you expect of me? Beer. Mm. Oh, apparently the average is like 30 euro. So it looks like any Pink Floyd album you have that's like original, like the original one that came out in the 70s and 80s, you'll get like anywhere from 30 to, this goes up to 200. I'd imagine that's for like mint condition though. But anyway, what's the next one? Both of these look like they're Pink Floyd albums. Oh God, there's three. Oh Christ, my dad likes Pink Floyd. Does anyone know that? Did anyone know that my dad liked Pink Floyd? This is Pink Floyd. I can't read what the album says it is. It is uh, this one. <laughs> Another Pink Floyd one, I'm guessing. And then, of course, we have Relics. I'd imagine Relics has a big uh, price tag on it if you want to look up Relics. I think that's all the Pink Floyd, so we should be able to... Uh, oh, watch out. There's always more Scullion on the way. What's that one? Balance and Control. I do not listen to Scullion. I have never listened to Scullion and I probably will have to after this video because I'm going to ask my parents who Scullion are. We're going to do another quick fire of a couple that I don't know. Howard Jones, Humans Lie. He looks like an author. This one is still even slightly in the big country, the seer. I have no idea what this is. All I know that it's said that in HMV it was £7.69 so it's at least 15 years ago that this got bought and it says 1986 on here but that's the original plastic I mean when was this bought? I have no idea it looks brand new either way here's one that everybody knows Boston everybody knows this album because it's awesome oh, such a good album it was amazing Aqualung by Jethro Tull, another classic album that pretty much everyone in the world probably owned at one point or another. How much is Aqualung worth? You would think there'd be a lot more metal on here than there actually is, but um, I listened to a surprising amount of not metal. Apparently the average is 3 euro, but someone has paid 83 for it. So someone either got ripped off or else a lot of people are just being really chill about this. Another Phil Collins album. Oh, it's a double, it's a fold out. That's a cool thing. That's a cool way to do the credits. With the post-it notes and everything. I do love this album. I had the, I remember this album because I bought it on iTunes. And when I found the record collection, I took this because, just because I recognized it. And I'm gonna be that day one fan that says my favorite song on it is Take On Me. Sorry. It looks like it's in great condition still. I haven't listened to this album on the vinyl. I just listened to it a lot on my iPod Touch. Fourth generation, no, third generation, oh my God. I listened to this a lot in work. Obviously not the vinyl, but uh, I listened to ZZ Top quite a bit. Just because it's easy to listen to, it's pretty much just it's cowboy music, isn't it? It's, it's racist old man music. Next up, we got Duran Duran. We're starting to sense a pattern with how 80s my parents' music is. Do you know what? I bet people can guess how old I am based on the music that my parents listen to. It's all from around the same time. I don't know. Maybe you can. Maybe you can't. I don't know. But yeah, Rio. I like Duran Duran. I don't know this album as much. I know a couple of the songs, but I know other albums more. No! Oh, seriously, look at that! Pat Benatar, Fire and Ice is a great song. We Live for Love, Hell is for Children, Love is a Battlefield. Ah, oh, that's such a good album. It's been so long since I listened to it. This next one is part of my collection, and it is To Those Left Behind by Bless the Fall. Amazing album. Uh, probably one of my favorite metalcore, post-hardcore albums of the last 10 years. 
probably one of the best ones that has ever been released and it's still pretty much in perfect condition. It was meant to have this cool burst thing on it, but it doesn't. It's just a black vinyl with a slight design on the inside. Actually, I wonder how much this would be worth now cause, since it's in... I, I, I wouldn't call it mint condition. I, I'd call it pretty good plus. Oh, don't change how pretty good plus it is. Oh, we got another metal one here. And this is one... Oh! Do not run away from me. This is Tribulation Alive and Dead at Soja Theatin which is a live album that uh, they released last year? Last year, uh, in October, November, something like that. And it's such a good album. I mean, it's ridiculously good quality, first of all. The packaging is amazing. This is probably the best packaged vinyl that I own, um, just because everything feels so heavy and weighty and good quality. And my favorite song off of it. Strains of Horror is like such an encore. I love Strains of Horror and The Lament. I'm really into opener and closer songs. Um, I love Tribulation in general. If you want to actually check out more Tribulation stuff, I did get to interview them at um, a festival that they were playing in Ireland last year. So if you want to check that out, watch it. You're in quarantine, what else are you doing? This next one has a story. It's Carry Me by The Levelers. Now, for any of you that are saying, oh my god, I love The Levelers, it's great folk music. You're right, it is great folk music. However, I got them confused with Death The Leveler. that it was metal and I bought it. It's a folk album. The Light Clockwork by Queens of the Stone Age. Also up there with some of the best packaging I've gotten on a vinyl. Cause look at that, that is so cool. Listen to this a lot, but the first time I went to listen to it, I did not know how vinyl players worked with the speeds and stuff. I was like, wow, this first song is really slow. No, no, wrong speed. My favorite song on it is probably My God Is The Sun. Because it's a banging tune. Oh yeah, we got Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull is one of those bands that I've already looked at. So I'm not going to talk a lot about it. But I have a live album by them. Here's Elton John. This is a single. I'm Still Standing, extended version. I don't even know the original version. But side two apparently is Lord Chuck Ice. I mean, you're either going to be the best or the worst musician in the world if you name yourself after an ice cream. So, I kind of have to listen to it. Kansas, it's a live album. Two for the show, that's the name of the album. And it's, again, not from my collection. It's old and used and definitely for good reason. It has great songs on it. It's two different albums, uh, two different vinyl, I should say, for the live show. And it's... I looked it up before and looked up... I didn't even look it up. I think it has all the info inside of it. It has it all in the... Is that meant to do that? I don't think that's meant to do that. Uh, on the sleeves of the vinyl, it gives you like lots of info and history and stuff on how the album was recorded and the tour and everything like that. And it's just interesting to read while you're listening to it. But it was a great album and I've listened to it several times over because it's good. Is that a surprise that Kansas are good? Is that an original opinion? No, I think everybody knows that Kansas are good. I'm just reiterating that. Depeche Mode. It's a compilation. I don't know if it's an official one. Um, one thing I did notice with this is that the order of this is different. It's really different um, than what it says on the back. On the back it has all these song names, but it's not in that order on the vinyl. I don't know if I just got a weird press of it, but um, yeah, it's basically like all of their early years singles and the, the famous songs, you know. Next up, Roxy Music. I like Roxy Music. Oh, but I accidentally picked up two. What's the other one? It's Pink Floyd again. This is Roxy Music. I listen to Roxy Music quite a bit because I had a CD that was given to me by my uncle of Roxy Music's greatest hits, I think, or the best of Roxy Music. Apparently this was six pounds back in the day when it was bought. 
I remember them being kind of punky anyway back in the day. I haven't listened to them in a few years. I'm sure that when I was a kid, I remember thinking like, oh man, this is like, this is like proper rock. Oh, apparently it's called pop rock and synth pop. Yeah. Next up is Yazoo. Same logic as the, as the ice cream. It's named after milk, it must be good. Let's check that out. Let's see what that makes of itself. Upstairs at Eric's. No one else is going to have that album name. It'll immediately know it's Yazoo, and it does. That's fantastic. LP album. Let's see. Synth pop. It's not even worth that much money. Uh, I'm not going to sell any of these anyway. I'm not really preoccupied with how much money these are going to make. Don't know who Richard Wright is, but apparently his album is called Wet Dream. That's fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm not preoccupied with the amount of money I would make off of these. It's just out of interest. It's like Steve Winwood, I've heard of him. I think Apple gave away his music for free once. Uh, Neuromantic Yukihiro Takahashi. I listened to this because I thought that it was so strange and odd to be in one of my parents' um, music collections. I did not expect that this would be uh, the type of music that either of them would listen to, but just based on looking at it, you know, it's got such like an artsy kind of cover, and he's Asian, and I was like, oh, okay, like, let's look this up. It was interesting. Also, just a good time to point out, I will not be putting a link in the description for every single one of these albums. Um, hell no. Not gonna happen. Because um, that would take way too much work, and also it would not fit. I think you get like a maximum 2,000 characters or something. Not a fucking hope. Um, I don't know what this is, but it intrigued me. China Crisis. Difficult shapes and passive rhythms. Some people think it's fun to entertain. It's synth pop. <laughs> and apparently it is worth nothing. Absolutely nothing, but why am I surprised? Another Mike Oldfield album. Um, it is not Tubular Bells. That's all you need to know about that one. Ultravox. I do not know it. I think all of this is just synth pop. Where's the other stuff? Like Gay and Terry Woods. But to correct myself and say, no, that's Gary. I think it genuinely says gay. Miss Randy Crawford? Is it racist to say I think this will be soul? MD, minor detail. They both look like Jerry Seinfeld. I'm not gonna even bother with it. Dazzle yeah. Ships. Oh. Dazzle Ships, OMD. What's this now? It's a cool looking. That's like a. Oh, what? Does this... Oh, it opens like this. That's interesting. I don't remember this vinyl at all. I've never come across it. It even has a cool sleeve on the inside. Um, okay. There is Clannad, Magical Ring. Look at them. Aren't they obviously from the 80s and Irish? Holy shit. Oh, look what we have next. That man that looks like he could be Tom Selleck. But a pedophile. David Soul. I don't like the way he's looking at me. I don't like it one bit. I don't like his shirt, I don't like his moustache, I don't like his eyes. I don't like the way his hair is parted. I do like the horse. Hmm. Ah, we got another Steve Winwood album, I'm not even gonna comment. So we have the soundtrack to Flashdance. Apparently. Haircut 100. It looks like it's a Christian boy band of some sort. That's wonderful. Oh, look, we have something good coming up next. We have, aha, a George Michael. What album, you ask? Not an album. Just Careless Whisper. The extended version. What's on the other side of the vinyl, you may ask? We got the Eurythmics, which is just, you know, again, goth as all hell. Back in the day it wasn't goth, back in the day it was pop as all hell, but now today, all of the girls that think that they're edgy um, listen to this shit and think that that's what makes them edgy. No. 
your parents listen to this. Thomas Dolby, The Flat Earth. This just sounds like a concept album. All over. Synth pop. Why wouldn't it be? Murray Head. Another thing I have no idea about, but it looks like Al Pacino's on the cover there, so I'd imagine it's the Godfather soundtrack. Oh, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. That wasn't the name of the album I had from OMD. That was uh, the name of the... Oh, now I see. So this is another one called Architecture and Morality. Why do so many synth pop bands seem like they're just gonna be Christian boy bands? Oh. I'm mainly thinking that because of the back of it. One of them got touched. Let's see, there's... Um... Q-tips featuring Paul Young, Live at Last. I'm liking that you can tell the type of music from the cover. Murray Head. Shay. Shay. Brenda Russell. Yeah, let's just be racist again and say she's soul. Oh, look, here's a good album that I like. A Day at the Races. I listened to this album every single day for about two or three weeks while I was painting as a 16-year-old. And by painting, I mean I got a job when I was 16. I'm not artistic whatsoever. Great album. I used to listen to A Day at the Races and A Night at the Opera, and I remember that because I always used to get the two of them mixed up when I was 16. Daryl and... or it's Hall and Oates, that's what it is. I was trying to think how to describe it. H2O, that's obviously someone's very sweaty skin, but which one of them is it? I don't know. Neil Diamond, Beautiful Noise. Produced by Robbie Robertson. I think that's a funny name. I like that. I need to listen to Neil Diamond a little bit because I've heard from a lot of people that he's one of those classics, but I probably won't bother. Steely Dan, I know Steely Dan. I don't know this album, but this is a Steely Dan album called The Royal Scam. Say that three times really, really fast. Steely Dan, The Royal Scam, Steely Dan, The Royal Scam, Steely Dan, The Royal Scam. Yep, that is not a tongue twister. What is the next album? It's Drama. And it says special price for the original album, five pounds. This is also giving me an excuse to look up more music because plastic noise. Oh, cheap beer. This is also giving me an excuse to listen to more music because I always reach for the same vinyls in that box and I never listen to new ones. Here's one I listen to all the time. Hemispheres, because it's amazing. My favorite song is La Villa Strangiato. Why? Because it's amazing. And also, I listen to this on headphones. I listen to pretty much everything on headphones, actually. Um, to the speakers, not so great. I do not have enough money for an awesome hi-fi system, and I don't feel bothered hooking it up to my computer speakers, because that's just too much work. But, hemispheres, yes. Oh, get ready for all the goth girls to go fucking crazy. You don't know what it is yet, because it's just a black, fucking case? Well, guess what? All of your goth friends are able to tell what this strip means. It means, ta-da, that it's Blue Monday. And listen now while I take a moment of silence to let all of the goth girls sing it out of key. Are you done now? Are you done singing that song that I've heard a million times over? Next up, Ted Nugent, because Ted Nugent is awesome. I listen to this a lot. I do enjoy this album. My favourite song off it is probably Doggy Dog. I'll show both of these at the same time. So, I always listen to these together. There is Joe's Garage and there's Apostrophe. My favourite song is probably Don't Eat the Yellow Snow from Apostrophe. Like, of all the Frank Zappa stuff. Or maybe the song Apostrophe. I'm not able to tell. Joe's Garage is amazing, but I listen to this usually first and then this is, becomes background after a while. But Frank Zappa is amazing, and if you are into any kind of prog whatsoever, but have not given yourself the courtesy of listening to the guy that basically created just the weirdest, coolest, funniest stuff ever, he's basically comedy prog without meaning to be. Uh, like, just do yourself the favor and go listen to him. Blood Sugar Sex Magic by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Everybody knows this album. It's really good. I actually got uh, the 180 gram vinyl reissue and um, two separate vinyls. And it comes with a little sleeve on the inside with some pictures. It's not really like a special edition anything. It's just, come on. Yeah, it's just, it's just the vinyl, because I like it. I'd imagine this is, like, an album that everyone's already heard. My favourite song is Suck My Kiss, or... 
or maybe Psycho Sexy, because that's just such a good song. Or I Could Have Lied, that's such a good song, especially on the vinyl, I Could Have Lied is amazing. Plague Mass, Living Amongst Meat Eaters. Oh, Among Meat Eaters, not Amongst. Among Meat Eaters. This is an album that I bought in George's Arcade because they had this thing in uh, The Rage, which I don't know if it's still there in George's Arcade, but they had this thing where you could, if you wanted to, uh, go and check out their vinyl system and it would cost 1,000 euro and they would sell you that vinyl system. And if you wanted to check out an album, they would let you go into this little booth and try it out on their system. I just picked this up listened to it, loved it. Um, apparently they broke up uh, 10 years ago, something like that, and they only have a few albums, but there's another band called The Ar Archivist or Ar Ar Archivists or something like that, that was started after they broke up and it has a couple of the members in it, I think. And they're really good and they're slightly different, but they still have a lot of the same aggression. But if you love post-hardcore, not even post-hardcore, if you love like hardcore punk, like just heavy shit, Plague Mass, do yourself a favor. And the last one I have is Hate Me by Escape the Fate. Um, again, up there with Bless the Fall as being like one of my favorite post-hardcore albums. It's just ridiculously good. It came with this green vinyl, and I don't think it was meant to be, come on, oh. That is such a nice color. It also came with like some tarot cards inside and a download code. I am not touching the tarot cards. I'm not touching the download code. I'm leaving everything perfect. Although I have listened to it a lot. This is one of my favorite albums ever. And there is no disputing that. Um, the way that they did this album on vinyl was really good and my favorite song on it is probably... I can't decide a favorite song on this one. This is one of those albums that I love every single song, like Live For Today, Breaking Me Down is amazing. Uh, probably the only song I don't love is the title track, and even at that it's still a good song, I just don't love it, you know what I mean? But, yeah. Anyway, as you can probably tell by the fact that it's getting darker and I've been getting drunker, It take, it took, take. It took a long time to film this, so I hope that you watched the whole thing through. And if you're seeing this right now, you obviously did. I appreciate you for watching. I'm just gonna give like a little shot to give everyone a little bit of anxiety. Oh, check that out. That is all of the vinyls taken out of the box. No, it's not, because there's lots of singles in here. But. Oh. Singles. Okay, we got, uh, oh, Stevie Nicks. Um, what is it? Stevie Nicks, uh, uh, Stand Back by Stevie Nicks. We got, uh, Street Watching by Scullion. We got, uh, Gypsy by Fleetwood Mac. We got more Paul Young. Wait, Paul Young, you should watch White Gold, because they reference Paul Young a lot in it, and the soundtrack for White Gold is incredible. It's made by the same guys that made In Betweeners. I'm talking really fast because I'm so aware of how close my camera is to dying, because I've been filming for like an hour, hour and a half, and it has a terrible battery. Sold by a Rose by Paul Muggleton. That's not who it's by. That's not even how it's spelled. It's spelled Muggleton, made in Ireland. Who's Judy Tsuki? I don't know what any of this says. I don't know what's going on. Original sound recording made by Phonogram LTD. It's Dire Straits, produced by Mark Knopfler. Pa badges, posters, stickers, t-shirts. I don't know what that's meant to mean, but it sounds deep. Also, Mark Knopfler. Uh, Duran Duran, it's Hold Back the Rain. Um, Philip King, Ark of a Diver, I don't know that one. James Joyce, The Fruit Smelling Shop. An excerpt from Ulysses by James Joyce. Oh, okay, that's what it is. Read by Sonny Condal. Um, what's this one? Carly Simon, Why? Why indeed, bought on the 10th of September, 1982. What's this next one here? Oh, Follow You, Follow Me by Genesis. I don't like when it's hard to read. Uh, Aaron's Tune, Mike Post, featuring Larry Carlton. What's the next one? 
books fizz. My camera never lies. That sounds like a weird kind of soda. Why am I saying soda? I'm not American. That's Mark King 88 live. Do they know it's Christmas? Oh Christ. Oh, it's the Live Aid or Band Aid song that has Bono in that. Uh, IGY by Donald Fagan. Whoever that is. Simple Minds. We all know Simple Minds. Simple Minds is good. And also on the other side, there is a, a Star Wars Cantina Band theme that I love listening to because apparently it's a lot more famous than I thought it would be. And one of my friends sent me a link to uh, a full album of these remixes of Star Wars music. Okay, now finally we have reached the end. It's dark. I can get back to listening to the music instead of talking about it. If you reached until right now, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I'm sure it was a longer video, um, but thank you for watching up until this point. Uh, if you'd like to see something similar with my CD collection, which is all mine, so I'll have a lot more to say about the music that's contained within, then just let me know. You can follow me on my Instagram, Facebook, uh, you can subscribe if you like, like the video, you can share it around and uh, check out my other videos. Stay safe during this quarantine, I hope everyone's doing okay, and be smart. Until next time, I'll talk to you later, yeah?